If you are looking for a Russian Aerospace 35mm black and white film, and let's be honest, who isn't, then this is the video for you. Welcome to the channel, my name is Paul Mackay from Analog One Lad, and today we are going to be talking about Washi D, and the tips and tricks for how to get the best out of this pretty unique film. Quick one before we get started, if you like film photography and want to see more videos like this one, film reviews, tips and tricks, that kind of thing, then please do make sure you're subscribed to our channel and notifications are turned on. Thank you so much. Before we talk too much about the specifics of the film, I want to touch very quickly on the company behind it, Film Washi. Film Washi say that they are the world's smallest manufacturer of film, and quite frankly, I believe them. And by them, I mean him, the man behind the brand is a lovely Frenchman called Lomig, who works in an ex-military storage unit in a field in France, producing some of my favourite speciality films. Now Lomig is probably the closest thing to a mad inventor I've ever met in real life, and I mean that with all of the love and praise for him, because he is incredible. Once I met him at Photokina and he had what looked like steampunk goggles around his neck, and I was like, oh, let me, what are these? And he said, um, well, the French military have banned me from buying infrared goggles, so um, I've made these myself. Um, this is version three, and I used them in the darkroom. Uh, <laughs> which I I don't think I ever got to the bottom of all the questions I had from that conversation. Um, like what happened to the first two? Uh, why why were the French military involved? Um, and why does it have a battery pack? But anyway, fantastic, fantastic guy. He has two broad lines of film, shall we say? One of which are his hand coated films, the legendary Washi W and Washi V where he has mixed the emulsion and hand painted them onto Japanese paper. And he also has his speciality films. These are interesting and unique films that he has sourced from all around the world, cut them down into 35mm 120 and sometimes 620 as well. Washi D is one of those speciality films. It is a film that has been cut down from a spool originally used in the Russian aerospace industry for, quote, generic uses, including military surveillance. The first thing you might notice is it's ISO 500, which is already pretty interesting. Of course, most films are multiples of 50, basically 50, 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, etc. This is 500. Now, of course, in reality, if you have a camera that can only cope with 400 or 800, then set it at 500 and you won't really notice a difference. But if you want to be truly accurate and authentic to the film, then grab your light meter, manually set everything, and shoot it at ISO 500. A couple of practical points. Now, of course, this is a black and white film. It has strong contrast, moderate grain, is pretty sharp. We don't have a huge number of sample photos on the website yet, but of course I'm hoping that that will change when you guys have had your chance to shoot it through the Wonderbox subscription. But the ones that do, everyone who comments says that this, this produces a beautiful balance between softness and sharpness. The grain is minimal. It's a really gorgeous black and white film. However, it has a very thin film base. Now what does this mean? This means that if you're home developing, it'll be pretty hard to get the end onto the reel because it will want to almost crinkle like paper rather than slide right in. So don't panic when you first get to that point. Lomig uh, suggested to me that if people are really struggling with it, then you can always tape a small amount of leader from a normal film to get it started on the reel, and then you'll, you'll pick it up pretty easily from there. That's one thing to notice. The second thing is that the base is transparent, which brings us back to our old friend light piping, which we talked about with Let It Snow. And it's a reason that I'm not showing you the 35 mil canister constantly when we're talking here. I'm keeping it safely away in its lightproof box. This film, because it has a thin, transparent plastic backing, means that any light hitting the edge of the leader could potentially get transported inside the roll of film and cause light leaks, despite it never being pulled out. Ways to cope with that is uh, keep it in a lightproof box when you're not shooting it. When you load it, load it in subdued lighting and then burn through the first couple of frames because there may be some initial light leaking at the start regardless of how careful you've been you don't want to try and shoot something really special and end up with that effect unless of course you choose to one thing i've always wanted to do actually is 
almost embrace it and shoot a laser at the end, like an optic fiber, and see how far you can get through. But um, I'm not sure I'd waste an entire roll from my Wonder Box doing that just yet. Who knows? Who knows? The nights are long and dark, and lockdown is lonely. You've got to have some things to, uh, to occupy yourself. There we go. So, a really beautiful film for things like landscapes you can see it being used for. It's not overpowering contrast, really sharp yet really smooth. People who do develop it at home, who print it at home, say it gives absolutely gorgeous tones. If you send it to a lab, warn them that the film's going to be a bit thin, but then you will definitely enjoy the scans that come back. Again, that clear plastic base lends itself to really, really crisp, beautiful scanning. So a really, really gorgeous film. I'm really excited to see what you guys shoot with it. The three reviews on the site already are all five stars, which is always a promising start for any film. The sample photos have been gorgeous. If you're a Wonderbox subscriber, then this is the second of the January films. We've carried on the, the Soviet theme from last week's Cosmo photo into this one now. I'd love you to experiment a little bit with the differences. Obviously the ISO is one big one, but whereas with Cosmo we said it can give you some really lovely, gorgeous atmospheric grain in the shadows. This one is going to be much crisper, much cleaner. And obviously ISO 500 will be able to cope with less light and still producing brilliant images. No problems at all. So please do let me know what you're gonna shoot with something that is this interesting. Um, let me know anything you're worried about, any questions you might have, pop them in the comments and we'll make sure we answer them. Otherwise, enjoy. Enjoy our second week of Soviet Russian inspired films and I will see you again soon. Thank you so much.